Welcome. I am the embodiment of your desire to live. Let's continue playing the void. We are a lost soul, trapped in a dark new world. Stumbling around senseless shapes, trying to gather up what passes for sustenance in these parts. Even more so than that, precious colour fuels the void's very existence. Thankfully, the only person I've met so far has been very friendly and helpful to an extent that I can't fully appreciate at this time. Speaking of the sister, last time she asked us to come talk to her, after searching through all of the chambers in her realm, I've got nothing better to do, so let's go and do that. Again, we need to tease her into compliance by coating her liberally, leaving her to dry for two to three hours. Ah, she didn't like my first attempt. There we go. I didn't warn you about the most important thing. Time, cold, and hunger aren't the most dangerous threats here. Listen. I'm hoping the brothers left this place forever. But if they ever return and find you, you'll be thrown into the nightmare. If they understand who you really are, there'll be no mercy. They're brutal, but blind. We could trick them together. If you collect the color in my chambers, grow a garden and feed me, They'll decide that you're a new brother. The one that I was destined to. Then they'll accept you as their apprentice. And give you some color. So you won't die of hunger. And then we would see what we could do. Start by growing a garden. This is your best life source. Fill as many trees as possible to the tips of the branches and collect your first harvest. Then my heart will be at ease. Okay, this is a good argument against being yourself around other people. If people see your true face, they may try to smash it in. We need to take steps to effectively disguise ourselves as a brother, since brothers look after the sisters. They're not related to each other by the way, it's simply because the respective groups are similar to each other in appearance. So that's what I gotta do, emulate their job or their preordained role, I'm not sure whether they enjoy it or not. When your palette is full of a colour, any additional nerve of that colour will spill into the void. That's just a reminder, don't keep passing colour through your hearts if it will overflow your never, because that's clearly a waste. You'll lose it behind the voids, hypothetical surf cushion. As I've been travelling from chamber to chamber, I've been painting it along the colour, you don't actually have to do this. If I select an empty vial and pay my way across, it works just as well. As time goes on, it'll start to cost more and more to travel between chambers, so that's a very good economical tip. I'm sure I'll forget to do it most of the time, I doubt it'll have any lasting impacts. Now, we need to go and plant an entire garden. As you saw last time, it takes quite a bit of colour to bring each tree up to its max. So I'm going to stick some more emerald in, get a nice balance going, as I'll try to do even when I have more than two available, and I'll run through a bit of time. Just up until the edge, the brink, the precipice, between cycle 1 and cycle 2. And this has easily given me enough emerald and gold to paint some more undermanning trees with my low levels of colour. So let's go do that now. And this has already become a clever management on using your resources. We need to find it, build it up, and then spend it away to hopefully get more return later on. Looks like there's only one creature wandering here. Do you hear it? Well, I don't hear it, I don't even see it. But there is a sense of undulation in the wind. The sounds that this area is making. One tree down. Ah, there we are. I've been expecting you. The first predator, which you've already seen in the tutorial. I don't have any choice in offensive techniques right now. 
Pretty much all I can do is lob colour at it and hope it sticks, bats it out the sky. The satisfying sound of a compressed liquid dunking into a ball of leather. Unbelievable, you beat it. Yes, that's how you use colour to fight. Remember, the more colour you put into your blows, the greater the damage will be. Our quarry is some sort of hideous bat creature. I forgot to show it off, but if you let it dive bomb you for a bit, she starts getting really, really pent up about having you kill it. It's a bit worrying, actually. I didn't expect a person like her to want something to die so badly. So that's one predator down, one more tree to fill up, and that's all we can do for this cycle at least. There we go. Now if I just wait out in the void for the cycle to run out, all of the trees, even this one I've only just planted, will blossom into lympha. I at least have some control over what happens here. Uh, may as well take a closer look at the bat roach genetic abortion over here. That was a nice physics fall though. There aren't very many uses for the physics engine in this game. The environment is static and there aren't any bits for me to pick up or interact with. So when it is used, it's all the more interesting. Predators have appeared again in my realm. This is not good. Even though they are not alive, they are dangerous. They feel colour inside you and will always attack. Worse, their return is a sign that colour is being wasted. And nothing angers the brothers more. The appearance of predators in a sister's chambers is a sign that her realm is diseased. I beg you, rid my chambers of the predators, or we're both in danger. Just be careful that you don't waste colour doing so. Well, that's disconcerting. I've only used colour to plant trees so far. Uh, except from that globule I left in the mine over here. So if that in itself is a waste, it follows that prolonging my existence is a waste of colour. Surely it's beneficial to kill off the predators. It feels almost as if colour has come into the void. Just a little bit, but still. Something has changed. In the old times it used to be like this. With each cycle, Colour came to the chambers of its favourite sisters, until Colour became angry with us and left forever. But now, could it be that these drops have come for you? Ah, it feels like she's interrupting me here, as if she doesn't want me to keep on going through my train of thought. Is she up to something that I'm in danger of compromising? I'll have to keep my suspicions very close to my chest since there's pretty much nothing I can do about them right now. I've managed to max out all the gold in my lympha, and there's emeralds still to go, so I'll let some drain through me for now, since I'll be getting a lot more from the trees I've just planted. Here you can see the emerald draining through. As it empties, I can fill up some more. You can see here that the units of time have dropped down by 25 in the time it took 25 colour to drain through my heart, so they're in exact correlation. They couldn't have done much more with the user interface to indicate how it works, but again it suffers in inverted commas from not spelling it out to you like other games might. Instead it requires analysing the numbers and the splatters in the corner. There's nobody here. Nobody. Finding out how to play the game itself was definitely my favourite part of the experience. Anyway, she said there's nobody here, as if she sees the predators as people, at least as sentient beings. I will give you the power to control time. So there's my meagre amount of azure. The font is great for the numbers, but it does make the fours look like sevens. So that looks like 76, but it's actually not in the initial, whoa, it's quickly replaced by, you know, not exactly disappointment, but it's not as much as you hope for. The sound as the trees get wrung out is quite harrowing. 
I may have offered them kindness in the past, but now I'm bleeding them dry. And you know, for all I know at the moment, they could be other lost souls that have been reincarnated as trees. They could be quite resentful of my actions. There's the last bit. As I said before, I'm going to need to start feeding the sister, and she will only take emerald and gold. So... I think I'll plant gold one more tree's worth. I have to provide for myself in the future as well as just the sister. She was also talking before how colour had arrived in the void. Elsewhere. Because of me? The sisters with their beauty and the brothers with their power, yet the colour has chosen me to latch onto, to give itself up to. Which immediately begs the question, what's so special about me? Am I a magnet for it? Did someone orchestrate my arrival here? Knowing that this would happen. Maybe it's all just one big coincidence. I'll think about it later once I...